all of wildlife photography is about storytelling. We're trying to capture fleeting behavioral moments that are difficult. We need everything to come together. I need the light to come together, I need the bird to come together, the weather to come together, have the right lens, have the right focal length. All of that stuff in a fleeting moment. And that's the storytelling part. Shutter speed is simply a duration of time. So the longer the shutter speed, the more that the camera is going to allow light to come in and impart motion over that time period. The slow shutter speed, we're trying to impart motion into the photograph. With the fast shutter speed, we're trying to freeze motion. And again, it's just subjective. It's not a right or wrong. So essentially, it just comes back to your personal style and the story that you want to tell. Shutter speed is all about halving and doubling. So if we have a 60th of a second, we go to 125th, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000, and so on. Now, normally we're shooting in thirds of a stop. So three clicks in either direction is one full stop. So again, if I go from 60th to 125, so three clicks equals one stop in either direction. When we talk slow shutter speeds, you know, 60th of a second or slower. Ideally, I'm gonna look for the area that has the most white water. So when I do the slow shutter speeds, we can actually see the effect in camera. If I shoot it in the, in the area that has black water, and there's not a lot of movement, the slow shutter speed is not conducive to the imagery. And we're looking for foreground, middle ground, background, just like when we do a landscape. And generally I'm gonna try and keep the Pelican approximately 25% of the viewfinder. So there's a sense of context and story. So everything that's stationary will remain stationary but anything that's moving will be rendered with a blur. And we'll fire off a picture and just show you what it looks like at the slower shutter speed when the pelicans are moving. I'm looking for a single isolated pelican to go up on this rock so we have the white water blurring in the foreground. If I come back here again just for a moment to where the white water is and I shoot it at a 20th of a second, okay, and I play it back, there's a little bit of a blur. The water's not moving that fast. So watch what happens if I slow the shutter speed down. And this is a quarter of a second. See how the one on the right just does not move? He just sits there, and that's what we're looking for. Typically when we talk about fast shutter speeds, it's uh, anything over a thousandth of a second, and most of our cameras will go up to eight thousandth of a second. I would say my default shutter speed for freezing a bird in flight is one twenty-five hundredth of a second, and I need autofocus to acquire and lock extremely fast as well. And, and that's where the eye tracking and the ability for the R5 comes into play. The faster the bird moves, the faster I need that autofocus to lock. We have fleeting moments. It all has to come together at the right time. It's imperative to know the cameras. A lot of what we do is fleeting moments, and the faster I can set up my gear, the more I know my ergonomics in the camera and where to adjust my focus, f-stop, shutter speed, all that stuff, it's gonna equate to better imagery. So you have to determine what it is that you want in the photograph. So 3200 at f4 is exactly the same exposure as 800 at f8, or 1600 at 5.6. I want the photograph to be sharp, and I want the detail that I want. I might have noise in the image because I'm using 1600, 3200 ISO, but I could take the noise out. What I can't get back is the sharpness and the depth of field in my original image. There's what's called angle of incidence and angle of reflectance. And what that means is if the light comes straight over my shoulder and it hits a white subject, most of that light's reflected back into my camera. And because it's a white bird, it means I have to close my, my lens down a little bit and not underexpose the image, but make the picture darker to ensure that I have detail in my highlights. If I move off axis and I have the light coming at an angle towards the subject, not all the light comes back to me. So if you look, this side of my face is brighter than that. So if we expose for this side, I turn my head that way, my face is in shadow. But if I expose for the highlight, and then I turn my face to the light, now your eye goes right here. And that's what we're looking to do with the pelicans. That's what we're looking to do with the wildlife photography. So we can position ourselves to the light. I can position myself to the background. That's my window of opportunity. And then I wait for the subject to orient itself properly to the light before I press the shutter. We're not just taking photographs, you're a communicator. What do you want to communicate, right? If I shoot down on a subject, it appears more diminutive. If I shoot up on a subject, I can make it look larger than life, right? If I shoot even with it, kind of on an even playing field. It's a gift being out here, you know? And 
And I think people get stuck behind the cameras and whether or not you got the shot, please understand that it's a gift. It really is a gift. And, and dwell on the experience. You know, and suck that up. Say, look where I am. Look what I get to see. And for me, there's no better place on the planet. And I thank all of you for allowing me the privilege to be here.